begin our operational briefing for the 23rd and 24th operational period. If I could ask you to turn on your radios and shoot your phones, we'll get started with a review of night ops. Good morning, Steve Crawford, uh, operations training team one. Uh, activities going on yesterday is a lot more of what you guys did the day before. The perimeter's still holding strong and, and solid. Uh, so got some more work coming on up here in the uh, middle port. Uh, they had some activity. We're able to get down in there. There are some uh, tree stuff. The limbs and tops of trees have fallen off, so they got down in there. Just looking at that, there's a little bit more work to be done down in there. Got some eyes on that. There is a uh, that big uh, sinkhole type uh, that was going under where they were did the construction. It was full of uh, uh, material, dark uh, logs and log deck and all that kind of stuff. They were working on that some more with the excavator. For those of you who are in that section. Uh, another log deck that they found off of uh, Jesus Maria. They were working on that uh, yesterday, the end of the day yesterday, uh, working on that piece. Um, down over here in uh, Quebec, Romeo, down by uh, the uh, sheep ranch area, there were some uh, dozer piles uh, that the uh, suppression repair folks uh, came across and were helping dig out for the uh, for, uh, for the group down there and uh, again going through hitting a lot of those islands uh, the good thing is the uh, amount of phone calls coming in from folks is uh, diminishing those those calls over the radio about the smoke check here smoke check there from the residents so that tells me that uh, we're doing good work out there making progress on that stuff um, the IR map uh, came in our map of the guys were working on that on this uh, seeking and destroying all those hot spots yesterday Another new IR map came out, showed progress on that as well, so it's doing really good as far as that goes from yesterday. Doing a lot of uh, post pulling where it was appropriate, so uh, we're getting all that in. Still got uh, a couple hundred thousand feet of hose out there. Um, leaving it in where it's necessary and pulling it out where, uh, where the fuel comfort level is up. So, uh, back calls still going, finding all those, uh, the heart, the collapse tanks and equipment and stuff out there. We're getting that stuff picked up, trash and all that. Continued doing that yesterday. And then um, uh, because of all the traffic out there, we had our uh, LE presence out there trying to just make those presence known so we won't have to slow down the residents coming in and out. So hopefully you see those folks out there again today so kind of getting keeping people uh, there. You guys are out there working for your safety and we're uh, having the police presence and kind of give them a little bit of a uh, can't hear you. Can't hear me. Copy that. Okay. Let me start over. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we're suppression repair folks, uh, we're doing, they're basically working, working, uh, working the flanks coming, uh, coming down from the top to the bottom on both sides, making really good progress on that. Uh, there's some areas that they're going to they're going to have to skip uh, due to um, uh, the activity of having hose on there, so they bump past some of those sections. But they made their way, you know, part of the way down over here uh, towards San Andreas on this side, and uh, made their way down in here to uh, to Vision Gulf and, and working their way down on, on the side over here. So uh, that's going to continue. They also were kept, like I said, working down here in uh, down in the uh, Sheep Ranch community area. And, uh, and helping out uh, with suppression folks and getting some of those dozer piles there. So, that was yesterday. Thanks. Thank you. And just a reminder: there are plenty of seats down front. If you can't hear, please move on down here. There's open seating, the best seating in the house, right down front. I'm going to have you uh, refer to your page one of your IP. And we're going to review the control objectives. They were adjusted the day before yesterday. They are to keep the fire north of Esmeralda Road, south of Highway 88 east of Highway 49 and west of the Stanislaus National Forest boundary. And we'll move to today's weather. Morning, Terry Lebo, incident meteorologist. Today's weather will be very similar to what we saw yesterday. Highs today will range from low 80s to around 90. The RH is going to be in the teens to low 20s. Winds will start out out of the southwest once we lose the downslope component from this morning. And then we'll see a, a shift to a west and even northwest later today as the Delta breeze influence finally reaches the area. Speeds will generally be four to eight mile an hour with gusts up to 15 mile per hour. Have a good day. Fire behavior. 
not a lot of fire behavior. So today you're going to see some smolder in here and here. So keep putting water here and here. <laughs> so you're going to keep seeing that smolder material pick up throughout the day as it warms up, dries out. The big key is we're going to start going back in that warm, dry uh, period in the next couple of days. As those hits and areas pick up and activity start to little flame, the spotting distance is still going to be fairly low. Winds will carry some stuff. The big thing to take home, if you get a new start or something outside the line, they'll have a moderate rate of spread until a good couple develops. Then you'll start seeing that short range to mid range spotting. When you start getting more of a plume, you might start seeing some long range spotting. So definitely keep your heads up, especially in Division Echo, where you saw material down that bottom. Look out anywhere you start seeing some smokes so and make sure nothing's going across the line. Oh, and watch out for those stone poles. Anything that has a large root wad, it has been burning for several days. So it'll burn underneath, leaving this nice little crust on top that will be fragile. So watch where you're walking and take a look. Have a good day. Safety. Good morning, Dennis Lane, safety training for Team 1. So we've been here since the night when this fire stuck. Uh, it's still going to work, so we'll see how far it goes. So, I'd like somebody to uh, let me know what they're going to do for a safety thing out there today on the line. Push it forward. <laughs> I'm going to start by briefing my crew so that they have a good situational awareness of what's going on. Good. Thank you. We got to not be complacent out there, so. We need to change things up and see how it's going. So, Nevada guys, what are you going to do up there today to pass the safety test? I'll uh, just make sure all my guys have a good combo plan so they know how to get a hold of each other online and if there's an emergency, how to get out. Cool, thank you very much. So, we just go over the same thing every day and every day, we try to change it few things up so we still have driving issues out there we need to keep our heads up with our boats and if you uh, are out there on the line today make sure everybody's still awake up so if you're uh, around areas and you uh, see some folks that maybe not should be out in that area uh, look a little shifty whatever just doesn't feel right to you guys Make sure you pass that up to the chain of command <coughs> and uh, get a whole lot of course there or up there. So, still need to be heads up on the uh, aspects like uh, fire behavior just said. So, be vigilant out there and let's have a safe day. Air operations. Good morning, Dave Lopez, Air Operations. Can you guys up in the festival seating hear me? Yeah. We still have two Type 2 helicopters and we've got a Helco available to hey. We're still operating air to ground on CDF CAC 13, and we have a hoisted rescue helicopter available for us out of Columbia Airport. If you guys heard the incident within the incident yesterday, you heard how well that went, and that was because of the division supervisor being really heads up, knowing what the evacuation plan, the emergency plan was, and making some good decisions. He used a risk to benefit analysis in choosing what aircraft he wanted to use and moving that patient out. I just want to remind you guys that an air ambulance is like a flying ER. If it were my kid out there, I would want them to have that kind of care. If you can't get the person to an air ambulance, he needs to be extracted, then use your risk to benefit, look at other ways of getting the person out, and if you need to, we'll go with the hoist. We'll get that person out of there. But that shouldn't be your first choice. You should look at it, analyze it, decide what aircraft is going to work best for you, and we'll get that aircraft out to you. Have a good shift. And now roll call for uh, divisions. Good morning, Jordan Weber, Resources Training for uh, Divisions Alpha through Whiskey. We know as Alpha Whiskey, uh, Randy Angler. And Echo through Golf, or Echo Golf, Aaron Lotta. And Rich Dykehouse. India, Juliet Romeo, we know as India Romeo. Clint Hamilton. And Kilo Oscar Quebec, we know as Kilo Quebec. Uh, Rob B. B. C. Sorry. Ben. And uh, Matt Houston training. I was working on that all morning, but I still messed up. And uh, for suppression repair, it would be Adam Freeze. Thank you. Now we'll review today's work assignments. 
Good morning, I'm Mike Lincoln. I'm the operations trainee for the day. So over the past few days, there's been a whole lot of good work done as evidenced in a few ways. We're starting to see a lot of black line on the map, which is obviously a good thing. The IR map uh, from last night showed no heat signatures within 500 feet of the line anywhere on the fire. And the phone-in reports that we're getting, they're still coming in, we're still getting quite a few of them, but they were way less yesterday than they were the day before. So all evidence of, of good work. And that's allowed us to start preparing down the organization a little bit. So no branches today, we'll be down to four divisions. Um, we'll be running the show. So most of the work today is gonna be up in uh, the South Fork of the McCulley on Echo, down in the river down there. And then down in the area that was the Valley Structure Group a few days ago, we still got a lot of heat in there yesterday. So we make sure those areas have the resources today. Thank you. Communications. Tom White Communications, unit leader. If you guys didn't come see us yesterday, you're gonna clone. Please come see us today if you're coming on shift. We had a new clone yesterday, so we'll look at that. And then a little change up for, uh, just to make a note for suppression repair, we need to change your tack net from yesterday. So please review the 205 on what your assigned frequency is. Thank you. Medical. Good morning, Brandon Grinstead with Medical. I'd like you to turn to page 21 and you'll find your 206 or your medical plan. Today we still have frontline available here in camp for your uh, basic commissary needs and any of your over-counter meds located up near feeding. If you need anything additional, we also have MERT available down by the CDC and we have uh, nurses and uh, doctors available for you. In addition, we still have American Legion Ambulance dedicated to the incident. In addition, there are systems statusing around the fire to meet our response time needs. We have four 12-hour uh, line medics out on the line. In addition, um, I'd like you to take a note that your uh, uh, special procedures and your uh, emergency contact. And note that in, um, if, you, if we do need to hoist, uh, we have a pre-designated LZ at the uh, Amador County Airport uh, that we can transfer to a ground ambulance or another air ambulance. Thank you. And logistics. Good morning, Greg White, T1 Logistics. Uh, you've heard from Ops. Word of the day is uh, backhaul for us. Fun fact for yesterday it was 106 miles, inch and a half on the fire uh, at the peak. Now we're down to about 50 miles of hose. So we got a lot of backhaul to do out there. Just let us know uh, what your needs are. Uh, we're ready to uh, get out there and pick that stuff up. Anything else you need, let us know. We're here to help. Have a safe shift. Finance. Jack Franklin Finance. So if you can turn to page 22, got a couple things for you. We got some vendors out there who haven't done their paperwork yet, so please stop by the time unit. Also, we got a couple state personnel who haven't done their 33s. Make sure you stop by the time unit, take care of that. Offsite feeding still not approved. Uh, water usage locks, engines, water tenders. Make sure we get those filled out and turned into comp claims. If you got any questions, come see us. Thank you. Have a shift. nice shift. Safe shift. Information. Good morning, Calaveras. Good morning. All right, uh, a couple things. We've had a couple of town halls over the last uh, last couple nights, and I can say unequivocally that you have great support among the people we're serving. So keep up the good work. Keep making those contacts. If they need help, we have uh, the phone number on the uh, fact sheet so they can call in and get assistance. We're going to continue to have a PIO presence as we transition the fire to a smaller team. And just thank you, everybody, for all the work you're doing out there. Training specialists. Good morning, Steve Hurdle. Good morning, Steve Hurdle with uh, training. If you could turn to page 29 of your IEP. Uh, we currently have over 270 trainees on the incident. But right now, as of today, I have 150 of you that have not checked in. We do, do not have closeout. So I need you guys to come in today. I do close tomorrow at noon. So let's close out as much as we can today. Because uh, come noon on uh, tomorrow will be a hard closure because I've got to get all the packets uh, delivered and, and uh, to your home units. So please check in with me today or early tomorrow morning. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move to final comments, as a reminder, there is a 10 hundred hours uh, cooperators meeting at the Becky Thatcher building. Um, and the breakouts are posted behind you. Please report to your respective breakouts. Um, for those that are assigned to suppression repair, those in the Calaveras North, Moak Hill, and Folland suppression repair groups, your breakouts at the far back um, against the back wall. And now we'll have fire columns from our IC.
we want to keep Dallas nice and true for Team 1. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for their hard work. I, I know that you get down to the kind of the end of the fire and uh, the work kind of gets long and kind of tedious. I'd like to thank you for that. I'd really like to thank uh, the National Guard for their response and their service. Um, they want you to stay focused when you're out there. Uh, there's a lot of things that can still go wrong, a lot of moving parts. Uh, so really take a look at what you're doing. Stay focused on that. Take, take a look out there. Be, be a student of your profession. When you're out there, take a look at the things that went right or on the fire. Whether it's on the fire line or it's here at base camp, think about what went right and think about the things that went wrong. They say, you know, uh, experience is uh, what we name our mistakes, right? So really take a look at that, stay focused and safe. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the briefing. Um, as a reminder, unassigned resources down here in front. And please check the demo list for your respective demo times. Thank you.